and she's been uh, helping in some, some of the camps there at times. And, and so she's obviously seen all of this firsthand. So she starts raising this in a group and almost every single person in the group completely shut her off. They didn't say, stop talking about this, Mary. I don't want to hear this from you. They weren't honest enough to do that. But what they did was they just closed down emotionally. And then some of them used emotions of self-deception. One girl just said, this is making me sad. I don't want to hear this anymore. And she went upstairs. Like making her sad. This thing is making her sad. She just deceived herself. The truth is that she has sadness within her that it was triggering and she needed to access that. But she believed that Mary was making her sad. The others said, well, what else, you know, we don't want to know about this. What's the point of discussing this? Good intellectual rationale, right? I can't change it, so don't hear about it. How many of you have done that to somebody in your life, right? I know, I can't change it, so what's the point of me discussing it? Right? That is your intellectual rationale to avoid an emotion of powerlessness. Do you see? Can you see how intellectual rationale and then emotions can easily help you avoid some really core emotions within you? And I've just given you just a little example there. But let's look at the rationale of self-deception. This is the intellectual thing now going on that helps me to avoid everything. Now, I've given a few examples you notice there. One was... Um, when a person is stay, saying, oh, I love this person so much. This happened very recently on the internet, which we'll be bringing up as, as an example shortly. Now, I love this person so much, but I kick them off the forum. Right? That's not an act of love. Right? So, love always enables a person's free will. If you're controlling a person's free will, you are not loving anymore. You can convince yourself you are, but that's totally pointless, right? Because you're now in this rationale of self-deception. I'm convincing myself I'm loving, but actually I've been very, very unloving. Does that make sense? We often do all of these things. We can say things like, we can have reasoning that's false. Like many of you have had the false reasoning that if I feel all of my emotions, I'll die. It's a belief you have, right? But it's not true. It's impossible to die from feeling your emotions. The truth is actually quite the opposite. You can completely die from not feeling your emotions. What do you think creates cancer? It's a choice to not feel certain emotions and eventually creates a disease that kills you. Does that make sense? Depression? Depression, is that...? Depression is the complete suppression of all emotions. So these, a lot of these even diseases that we have, like heart disease. How many people in Australia die from heart disease every year? It's the emotion of sadness that is not released that creates it. Does that make sense? Right? While I'm holding on to these emotions of sadness, I am creating these physical things that kill me. So the truth is, is if you choose to not feel your emotions, you can certainly die. If you choose to feel all of your emotions, you're not going to die. I, remind, I might remind you, I'm not saying act upon them all. I'm saying, feel them all. So many of us will have an emotion of like feeling suicidal. I'm not saying act upon that emotion, but you can feel that emotion. Does that make sense? So I wanted to clarify that. So I, if I choose to feel all of my emotions, I will not die. But I can have this fear-based reasoning kick in inside of my head. If I feel all of my emotions, I'm just going to die from the experience. It's going to be so painful that I'm just going to cark it. And I don't want to do that. So that's my rationale to not feel. That's my rationale to control the feeling. That's my rationale to get away from the emotion. And unfortunately, that rationale is also disconnecting me from God. Now, I could also have a rationale that's very true. For example, here's another one. If I will lose some or all of my friends if I feel my emotions. Well, yes, you may lose some of your friends if you tell them the truth about how you feel about them. So one of your friends comes up and is, you know, the, the friend that you listen to for three hours and you walk away thinking, gee, that was a total waste of time. I don't know why I did that, right? Um, 
you know, like, I just sat there and sat there and they just rambled on and rambled on about all these things that I just, like, honestly. And then what do you do? Instead of telling them the truth, what do you do? Uh, you try to avoid little times with them, right? You try to manipulate your life so that you can stay away from that particular friend. You like them and you can feel some core things within them that are beautiful, but they just seem to do something to you that sucks all this energy out of you and you feel so depleted at the end that you feel like, I can't handle this. Now, do you think the moment you tell them the truth, everything's going to be very rosy? <laughs> Obviously not, right? Obviously, many of you believe it's going to get worse. Actually, I feel it always gets better. The truth is that the truth always sets you free. So the truth always makes things better. But many of us believe that's not the case because we have this initial counter-reaction. And you know what the counter-reaction is all about? It's all about the fact that we've lived in the lie for such a long time that now when the person hears the truth, they're feeling the full effects of the lie that we've lived in. It's a bit like, for instance, you've got a husband and a wife together the husband treated on the wife 10 years ago. Right? Never did it since, but 10 years ago he cheated on his wife. They've been together for 20 years. What do you think one of those first emotions the wife's going to feel when the husband feels the truth enter him, like feels the connection with God and feels he's got to tell the truth? So he goes up to his wife and says, actually, 10 years ago I cheated on you with this woman. Now, of course, he's going to be afraid, isn't he? But what is he really afraid of? The effects of his own lie. The effects of his own action. He doesn't want to actually reap the...